I am done with my freshman year of college. Aloha, it's Katie, and I'm finally back home. Oh my gosh. Today's video is a very exciting, much awaited one. It is going to be the first of a three part series called Cornell Declassified College Survival Guide. So original, I know. The idea is I wanted to make a whole series for you incoming freshmen, for you prospective students, for anyone interested in what life at Cornell University is like. I wanna talk about super popular questions I have gotten about food, dining hall meal plans, residential life, you know, dorms, transportation, the essential things I wish I knew as a freshman coming into Cornell. The third video is gonna be about college in general, so transitioning from high school to college, everything nobody told me about college that I wish someone had told me. I'm really excited for these three videos. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel. I'm trying to upload two videos every week this summer. And to make sure you don't miss them, you should click the bell to turn my notifications on or follow me on social media at LohaKDX for updates. Without further ado, here is everything you need to know about Cornell University. Cornell's campus is divided into four main sections. North Campus, which is where all the freshmen live. West Campus, which is where the sophomores live and also sometimes upperclassmen. Central, which is where all the classes, lectures, school activities are usually held. And College Town, where there are apartments, restaurants, cafes, you name it. You will hear those words a lot. Sometimes people will just call it Sea town some people will call it South. Don't call it South, it's weird. This is gonna be a long one because this girl is a foodie and she takes her food very seriously. But first things first, meal plan. A lot of you guys ask me what to get. The two most popular is either Bear Traditional or Bear Choice. Bear Traditional comes with 14 meal swipes a week, so you can guarantee you cover all your lunch and dinner meals. Bear Choice is 10 meal swipes a week. The Bear Traditional comes with $400 of Big Red Bucks or BRBs. Bear Choice, on the other hand, comes with 500 BRBs. Now, I started off with the bare traditional plan, which is more expensive than choice, because I wanted to cover all my meals. What ended up happening was I barely finished my meal swipes. I would usually use seven or eight meal swipes a week because one thing I didn't realize was on Central, there is only one dining hall. It became really inconvenient to try to go to that one dining hall where you could use your meal swipe on called Oaken Shields. And Oaken Shields is a very controversial dining hall. Some people call it Oaken and say the food is trash. But also now, just another issue is once they go to Central Campus for classes in the morning, they are probably gonna stay in Central the entire day. But trust me on this one, you will end up using a lot of your BRBs throughout the day. What ended up happening was I would use my meal swipes Monday to Friday every lunch, and then my meal swipes Monday to Friday dinner. Same thing for weekends, I would use my meal swipes Saturday and Sunday, but at night I would probably go out with some friends to treat ourselves at a restaurant in College Town or the Greater Ithaca, which I'll talk more about later. I think once you get on campus, you'll get a better feel for this, but the good thing is you can always downgrade your meal plan before a certain amount of time. So that's why I would suggest if you are leaning towards Bear Traditional, then go for it, and you always have the option to go down to Bear Choice. If you're already convinced that you're gonna be on Bear Choice, then stick with Bear Choice, but I changed mine to Bear Choice in the end because I was using a lot more BRBs, and that plan gave me plus $100 of BRBs, and it reduced my meal swipe, so I wasn't wasting them as much. For Freshman North has three dining halls, Appel, RPCC, or Robert Purcell Community Center, and Risley. Appel and RPCC have a long-standing debate or whatever about which dining hall is the best. In my personal opinion, Appel is so much better than RPCC, okay? I think Appel's food is way better. There's a lot more diversity and maybe as an international student, that's why it appeals to me more, but, but no, no, honestly, the food is much better too. But really, it's always changing. You can get Mexican, Asian, Southern. They really have a varied cuisine at Appel. Reasons people do like RPCC though are because of location, depending on their dorm, and also it is more customizable. So they'll have make your own scrambled eggs, waffles, pasta, and you can choose your toppings and everything. Risley is the third dining hall, and it is a vegan dining hall, so everyone feels much healthier eating there. Tuesdays and Thursdays, you can get stir-fried vegetables, and on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you can get poke bowls. But I will tell you a very helpful app that you can download on your phone that's called Eatery, and it has all the list of dining halls, tells you what time it's open, tells you the menu for that day, so if you take your food seriously, you can consult that app. First is Terrace, and their salads are iconic. You're probably thinking, why a salad? It's 
basically because you choose so many toppings to the point that the salad is not really a salad anymore. Their sesame ginger dressing is amazing and you just have to try it. You're gonna spend so much on it. Second is Max Cafe. They're flatbreads. Amazing. I'm not usually a pizza kind of person, but these flatbreads are delicious, especially Mediterranean and sun-dried tomato. I would also try the green smoothie. It is my favorite. Green smoothies have stigma, you know, but it, it's so good and you feel so healthy. Do it. Third is Trillium, which is a food court, and I love their barbecue pork. Fourth is Sage Hall, which is actually the business grad school. I love their curry on Wednesdays. And the fifth is not my favorite, but it is a very popular spot for late nights after parties. It's called Nasties, and it has all the greasy food you could probably imagine. Corona also has food trucks. My favorite was the sushi burrito one. There's also Louis, which is, again, all the greasy snacks and junk you can imagine. Our number one, Coco's or Four Seasons, which are both Korean barbecue restaurants. Second, Sopum, which is another Korean restaurant. I love their kimbap. Third, Oyushi Bowl, which has really good Japanese rice bowls. Fourth is Mehak, which is an Indian restaurant. And number five, Poke Lava for Pokeballs. Pokeballs, not Pokeballs. <laughs> And six, College Town Bagels, or abbreviated CTB, is a really hipster hub spot that students go to. It's a pretty popular thing in Ithaca. And dessert, insomnia cookies. I cannot say enough about insomnia cookies. So freaking good. Snickerdoodles, oatmeal raisin, hate on me or join me. Oatmeal raisins are freaking good. There are also three milk tea stores, actually. My favorite is UT. Second is Kung Fu Tea, which is cheaper. It has a fair number of branches around America. I, I will give them their boba. Their boba is by far the best out of all the milk tea places, but taste-wise, UT wins. Third one, Panda Tea Lounge. Some people like it. It's the cheapest. It's powdered milk tea, so it's not fresh, but those are the options if you're interested. And if you want to be healthy, Chatty Cathy for acai bowls. I get asked a lot, should I do a single or a double? I chose to have a double in COD because it's an important life skill to know how to live with someone else. And also because it's your first year, you'll probably want to have some company, not isolate yourself. So those were my reasons for choosing a double. And I was lucky enough to find a roommate before I got here. So I actually got to talk to her about our lifestyle habits to make sure we were compatible and we'd be good friends. I think that worked out amazing this year. Shout out to my roommate Val. Some reasons for a single are if you know you need your space, if you don't even want to risk that because you think it could really jeopardize your productivity or your health, then you can go for a single if you're really picky about your own space. But otherwise, I would really go for a double just for the experience. The two best dorms are Court K. Bauer Hall, or CKB, or Muse. I was very lucky to live in CKB my freshman year. It is air conditioned, can't say that about every dorm. Facilities are much nicer. Five people share one bathroom because the dorm style is in pods. So each pod will have two doubles, one single, and a bathroom. So five people share that. This is different from other dorms like Balch, which is the all girls dorm because they just have one communal bathroom with, I don't know, eight, 10 stalls um, that all the girls share in the entire floor. It's what you see in movies. Donlin is the social dorm. People there are known for doing really whack things and a lot of times people feel really pressured to continue the legacy of living Donlin so people flip refrigerators almost all the time smell weed when you're passing that dorm. It can either be a very fun experience where you make a lot of friends or you could just be really upset and grossed out by the hygiene situation because more often than not, vomit is gonna be in the bathrooms. Dixon just has a lot of singles, it's fairly old. Jameson is pretty good and it has a similar pod style but they call it sweets. I admittedly don't know much about them but I know they're relatively farther and facility wise, they're not as new as say CKB, Muse, or Donlin, but I hear the community is pretty nice. There are also townhouses which are pretty far away but are really good facilities. They're like house style living so I think people will have kitchens and a living space among four people or so. And there are also program houses where it's not just freshmen, it's open to any year level and it's based on interest. So there is one called Jam, which is the music house and attracts a lot of musicians. Risley is a performing arts one. Pilk is an international one. And there are a few others. All freshmen at Cornell get free bus passes. If you've seen my vlogs, you should tell my eye to watch. Again, an app that will be really helpful for you to map out the bus system is to download Ithaca Transit, which is also by AppDev. Shout out to my friend Maya, actually, who's the team lead for that app, and she is just an iconic, such an inspiring woman. Along with that, I would also download MyStop Mobile because MyStop Mobile will give you the most accurate live tracking of where the bus is. Honestly, walking from north to your farthest class is probably gonna take max 
15 to 20 minutes but trust me when it's winter and it's cold and some days you're just lazy you will want to take the bus and it's pretty conveniently located ones that freshmen normally take are route 82 and 30 so keep that in mind Cornell also has a lot of buses especially if you want to get out of the city go to New York City Syracuse Boston and in that case they will either take C2C which is Cornell's bus most expensive or coach USA short line which I think is the most reasonable uber and lyft actually has a decent presence at cornell if you're wondering how to get to cornell you can also take flights actually because cornell has its own ithaca airport which is very small it's pretty good a lot of people told me it was not reliable especially during the winter it was always delayed but my experience with the ithaca airport has been pretty dang good alternatively syracuse is an hour drive away which is the next biggest city that has their own airport so some people will take that or some people will take the four and a half hour bus to new york city and fly out of jfk get a gym pass the main one on north is Helen Newman but Appel also has a mini low-key one they also offer a lot of fitness classes that is so exciting guys your fitness membership will come with fitness classes spinning yoga Pilates muscle pump hit cardio kickboxing swimming ones sorry there are just so many fun fitness classes that I highly recommend you just try a lot of people also run especially because Cornell's campus is beautiful there are so many lakes during the winter Cornell has a lot of winter sports too they have skiing snowboarding cross-country skiing it is an essential that you try out some of their PE classes. They have the coolest things, especially if you want to get out of your comfort zone, explore the outdoors, hiking, sailing, snorkeling in the Bahamas, fishing, zip lining, and wall climbing, and caving, so many kinds of dancing, so many kinds of martial arts, circus skills, massage, and that is on top of all the basic ones like beginner, intermediate, advanced, volleyball, squash, tennis. It's crazy if you look through class roster which is the directory of classes at Cornell oh my gosh you'll be overwhelmed because that is one of the biggest perks of Cornell I'd say because of its size and because of its number of colleges there's just an incredible array of courses offered that will likely cater to one of your interests or allow you to explore something you've always wanted to sleep varies greatly personally I prioritize my sleep and social life this year but I just want to assure you that you are going to meet people like you no matter what. I at first thought that nobody would gym at 8 a.m. before classes because who does that? But you know, when I went one day, I saw so many people and it was so inspiring to see. It motivated me to continue going in the morning. It's a great way to start your day. Not for everybody, but your lifestyle is what you want to make of it. And I promise you, you will find other people who follow that same lifestyle. That was all the information overload I'm giving you today. Give this video a thumbs up if this was helpful. If you want to see more videos like it, make sure to subscribe down below so you know when I upload part Part two, where we're going to talk more about academics, Cornell culture, and the social scene. Click the top right eye to watch more of my videos and follow me on social media at LohaKDX so you don't miss out on any updates. I will see you less than a week with another new video. Bye, guys!